Okay. Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is May 17, 2020, and I have allergies, so if I sound funny, it's because of that. All right, I wanted to do this video because I want to share truth. That's what this whole thing is about, is truth. I, um, I get so many people that call us Lordship Salvationists. Well, you know, that's a title that somebody, some man made up. Okay, they call it Lordship Salvationist because uh, it was somebody that was against that. Okay, that's a man-made name. What I call it is submitting to the Lord, surrendering to the Lord, because that is what his word says. Okay, and these people that come on and argue with me about you have to just believe that he, that he um, died for our sins and that through grace we are saved alone. Okay. That we don't have to do anything else but just believe in our hearts that everything is already paid for. Past, present, and future sins. Jesus did all the work. We don't have to do nothing but just sit around and believe and we're good. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is share the truth of what the word of God says. People that come on and call me a liar and say that I'm, you know, uh, a teaching a cursed uh, gospel, I'm going to show you guys the truth that me and, and, and my fellow brothers and sisters, we are going by what the Bible says and what Jesus Christ told us to do. There's so many false teachers out there, and I'm not going against them because I hate anybody. I don't. I love these people. And yes, some people are hard to love because you get frustrated with them. I get frustrated that they're leading these people into falsehood. But I pray for these people. I honestly do. I pray for them. Because they don't know what they're doing. They don't know the word of God. So I want to go over this real quick. Okay? First of all, what does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? Now I found this article. You guys can read it here. You can see the heading and, and all that. So let's go through and read some of these uh Answer some questions. What does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? Okay, first of all, it says the foundation, his existence, identity, and nature. Faith in Christ means believing. First of all, that he is God and divine, the same type of being as the Father, though willingly submissive to the Father's authority. That he existed ex eternally with the Father without beginning or end. That he walked this earth as a man. That Christ was a real historical figure. And that he continues to exist at the right hand of the Father. And that he is a living example of the way of life that pleases God. And that the goal of true Christians is to grow into his likeness. Now this is in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Now I don't mean to throw names out here. But the reason I do expose some people, and it's not to be mean, but it's to say, listen, if you're following this person, I want you to double check what he's saying or what she's saying. Now, Greg, keep, Greg Jackson, for one, to makes these videos saying uh, that we don't, the, the we that say that we're supposed to transform and grow, that that's not true. But guys, it says right here in the living word of God that we are to be transformed into the likeness of Christ. So who's telling the truth? Are these false teachers telling the truth when they say we don't have to repent? We don't have to, we're not supposed to change into the likeness of God? That we're not to be transformed, that we're not to repent every day? Are you going to believe their word, or are you going to believe what's written in the Bible? This is what is so frustrating. And, the, and you know, if you can't see the truth, then I don't know what to tell you. Belief in Christ is built on the foundation of trust in the reliability of the gospel accounts. That's what I say when I tell people, believing in Christ is believing everything that he said and did. And what he tells us to do in the gospel accounts. It is as a source of historical truth. So you need to take the time to inquire about it and test the origins and the authenticity of the accounts. You will also find that there is an abundance of sources external to the Bible that confirms beyond reasonable doubt that these were, books were written by real apostles about a real Jesus of Nazareth. Faith in Christ means believing him. Jesus of Nazareth brought a message from God called the gospel, which means the good news. It's not the gospel of grace. 
Jesus came preaching the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God. It means the good news. Now, the gospel reveals that Christ will return to the earth as a king. And like any other king, he will have a kingdom with subjects, territories, laws that he expects his subjects to obey. His message also contained a grave warning as well as the good news. The warning is that we must repent. Otherwise, we are in danger of annihilation for our sins against God. Sin is breaking his laws, which are summarized by the Ten Commandments. The good news is that there is a way out. God has offered us forgiveness through repentance of sins and belief in the gospel. And this is in Mark 1, 14 through 15. Faith in Christ means believing this message with its warning and the good news, as well as the premises upon which that warning and good news are based. This process of rescuing mankind from eternal annihilation is referred to in the Bible as salvation. Faith in Christ also means believing his message about his role in our salvation. Let me repeat that because this is where people always try to say that I'm wrong and that I'm teaching an accursed gospel. Faith in Christ means believing his message. His message about his role in our salvation. We are trusting Jesus Christ with our salvation. He is directly responsible for our salvation. Not just saying we believe. Jesus is responsible. That is why his name is Jesus, which signifies Savior. We are trusting Jesus Christ with our salvation, which means I'm trusting what he said in the Gospels. I'm trusting his message, the good news with the bad news. The warnings. Okay? His, he is performing this role in three key phrases, past, present, and future. He became a sacrifice, dying for us so that we can be acquitted of past sins. Okay? It doesn't say future sins. This is directed to Tim Henderson, Chelsea Bedell, Greg Jackson, all of you guys. Read this again so that we can be acquitted of past sins. I don't see where he says in here anywhere that once I say I believe, then I could go the rest of my life and never have to repent again. Never have to walk with Jesus, who we're supposed to be walking with because we're trusting him with our salvation. He now provides us through the gift of the Holy Spirit, okay, with the power to stop breaking the law along with access and in intersection before God. Okay, do you understand that? He provides us through the gift of the Holy Spirit with the power to stop breaking the law along with S, excess and intercession before God. And I have a testimony of something just happened the other night that absolutely proves that. But let's read number three. It says, He has promised to transform us at His second coming into immortal spirit, children of God. Let's go back to number two. This is something people say, Jack, Greg Jackson says this, they all say this. We have 90 million thoughts a day. We can't possibly, you know, repent of everything. Oh, you guys, come on. First of all, Jesus gave us a prayer to go by. I say it every day. And when you have the Holy Spirit in you, he will convict you of what you're doing. And you repent. You say, all right, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to, to not do that again. Help me to forgive this person or whatever it is. And move on. Okay? It's about saying, when I get up in the morning, I say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. Okay? That means every sin, whatever I've done. You guys make it sound like it's so hard. But, oh, you got to list everyone. No, you don't. You say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. And if there's anything out there that I have that I'm still doing that is hurting you, that are against you, please convict me of it. All right, so now my testimony. The other night, there is a woman that has been attacking me for years, and it goes personal. She's brought personal issues with my family, things that were nobody's business. Well, I wanted to do a video just to call her out. And I did the video, and then I felt so convicted that I took it down. So the next night, I do it again, trying to give myself... Trying to say, well, I have a right to do this. I can, you know, I can do this. So, again, I did it. And a lot of times throughout the day when something happens, I always say, thank you, Jesus. Well, when I did this video, of course, and I admit, 
I found the worst picture of her that I could possibly find because I was hurt and I wanted to put a bad picture of her out. I heard the Spirit, Holy Spirit say to me, you can thank Satan for that. And again, I was so convicted that I took it down and I was like, Lord, I can't do this. I can't, I literally cannot do this. I am so sorry. So in other words, I was not supposed to do anything with this woman because, first of all, I already gave this woman to God. Asked him to handle it. But then I tried to jump in because, and through my flesh, tried to defend myself, satisfy my own flesh. But that's... This is what I'm talking about. This is what the Holy Spirit does. When you have him in you, you can't do that. I was so convicted. It was like, and I promised him, I said, I'm not doing this again, Lord. I apologize. And I continued to pray for her. Okay, so this is just an example of how the Holy Spirit works in us. So if that's not happened to you, then I would think, okay, well, wait a minute. Maybe I don't have the Holy Spirit in me. Everybody that, that just says, hey, I accept Jesus Christ, you think you have the Holy Spirit, but that's not true. So many people are led astray by these false teachers that I want is subscribers. I know for a fact that some of these false teachers get paid $100 per video. And I, I know that may sound accusing, and I apologize if I'm judging, but I'm trying to explain to you guys that okay where is their heart are they really trying to save people or are they just out for subscribers and clicks and want their face on there listen i learned the hard way with the lord okay through the many years that i've been doing this he has pruned me and changed me to the point where i don't know it's just i've just seen a huge difference in my life and i'm really thankful so let's go on it says faith in christ means accepting his terms for salvation all right, did you, did you understand that? Accepting his terms for salvation. Faith in him means accepting the terms and conditions by which we can be beneficiaries of God's grace and of Christ's saving work. Okay, we must repent and stop breaking the law since breaking the law is responsible for the penalty of eternal death hanging over our heads. We must exercise the type of faith in Christ described throughout this article. We must submit to the Father in Christ. Oh, wow. Somebody please show this to Chelsea Bedell and Greg Jackson and Tim Henderson who says following Jesus is crap. We must submit to the Father and Christ. We must be baptized to express the above described repentance and faith. And you guys, in the gospel, Jesus said to those that they are to be baptized. But people change, they change the word, they, they twist the the scripture because they don't want to offend people they want to say they want everybody to be their friend so if somebody comes up and says oh do i have to do that they'll say oh you don't you really don't have to do that when the word of god clearly says it does so all you're doing is you're just trying to be friends with the world you want everybody to like you so you're going to say what's comfortable to their flesh you don't have to change your life you don't have to be transformed no just say these words be my friend and hey click on me subscribe to me i'll tell you more sweet stuff that will just make your flesh so comfortable faith in christ means trusting him trust means to be confident about the reliability of a person's words and performance in the face of risk jesus christ is so trustworthy that we can have rock solid faith in his promises and in his love for us this can help us deal with all the dangers and risk we face. The stakes are high, but God's faithfulness is unshakable. This confidence can help us avoid succumbing to the negative influences of Satan, the devil, the evil world, and of our own human carnality. It can help us and keep repenting, overcoming, and striving for perfection until the end. Another thing that little that little episode the other night showed me is you can, you, you know, you can be a Christian, but the enemy's still going to lie to you and try to deceive you. You're not going to walk around floating around and, and being, you know, untouched by this stuff. Satan is still going to try to tempt you. He's going to lie to you. He's going to deceive you. Just like with me the other night. He was like, oh, yeah, you know, you have a right to, to make fun of this woman. And the Holy Spirit clearly told me, hey, you could thank Satan for that one because he's the one that's behind this, not me. 
Now, we are to expose the lies, the falseness. Absolutely. Absolutely. But in this case, it was just a personal thing. It wasn't about the gospel or anything. It was a personal attack against me and my family. And I had already given that to the Lord. So he was saying, I got this. You just pray for her. God changed me from uh, uh, somebody that I didn't like to somebody that's now following Christ. So, yeah, I pray that he does the same for her because I have no right to not forgive her because God forgave me, so I forgive her. It was a good lesson for me that night. Now, faith in Christ means trusting him to bring you through successfully in the face of all adverse possibilities. Because here's the, here's the case, guys. What are you going to do when you really go through something that's frightening? Is your faith strong enough that you're going to absolutely trust God? Or is it going to fall? Are you going to fall away? Because you've never really had a relationship with him. You've never followed him. You've never did what he told you to do. Instead, you just mentally assented. Oh, I believe. You have to believe. And I had this woman say, all you got to do is believe. You got to believe enough. Well, how do you know if you're believing enough? You see, God's plan is perfect because it's not about trusting yourself to believe enough. It's about, okay, I'm not believing myself. I'm believing God. So this one saved, always saved, are saying, oh, you just got to believe enough. Well, guess what? They're depending on themselves. They are dependent on themselves to believe enough. But Jesus is saying, if you believe in me, I will lead you through this life. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will convict you when needed convicted. When you slide, I will bring you back. You trust me. You trust what I say. Trust me with your salvation, and you shall have eternal life. Once saved, always saved is believing in yourself. Because how do you really know that you believe? Their, their, their do doctrine is false. And it's going to lead you down the wrong road. I can't say that enough. But in the end, you guys are going to have to choose what you want to do. I am telling the truth. So that I can stand before my father and say, I did everything you asked me to do. I spoke the truth. What they did with that is none of my business now. So faith in Jesus Christ is not about fanciful sentimentalism reserved for a religious mind that is out of touch with everyday realism. Now, on the contrary, it's about common sense cooperation with being who is generally interested in your eternal survival and in rescuing you from the collision course with certain future destructions. Jesus says, you believe in God, believe me also. John 14, 20, or 14, 1. Believing in Christ means believing in his existence, believing his gospel message, and accepting him as Savior and trusting him as Lord and Master. If you want to call that Lordship Salvationist, then go ahead. I'm calling it believing in the gospel. Because this is the absolute truth. I can't do nothing with G without Jesus Christ. He has transformed my life. If I would have just did what, the, what some of these people are saying, is just say, you know what, I believe he existed. I believe he saved me. 13 years ago when I came to the Lord, guess what? I wouldn't be changed. I'd still be, you know, selfish. Um, I would still be, you know, sinning, of course. Um, probably worse. I would be in a lot of trouble because there was no, there would have been no change in me. But when I said, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. You are my master because I accept you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Think about those words, guys. You call us salvationists, Lordship salvationists. Well, tell me. When you accepted Christ, did you or did you not say, I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior? So what do you think that you're doing? You're accepting him as His as your Lord. So technically, you're a Lordship Salvationist. J Greg Jackson, Jelsey Bedell, Tim, all of you guys are liars. Because you could sit there and say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Then you turn around and say that I'm not going to be saved. Because I made Jesus Christ Lord of my life. I'm doing Lordship salvation. You guys are such hypocrites and you're double-minded. Think about what you're saying. See, when you follow the gospel, when you follow the word of God, you won't be contradicted. But when you twist and lie the scriptures, guess what? You're caught at every turn. Because right there is just one thing that you're caught at. 
Oh, you just have to believe. As long as you believe in Jesus, believe that he's Lord and that he saved us, well, right there you're accepting him as your Lord. But when I say I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord, I surrender to him. Oh, my gosh, I'm teaching an accursed gospel. I'm going to hell. I'm not going to be saved. I rebuke every one of you people that are teaching a false gospel and that are not sharing the true word with God. When somebody comes to you there in a deep sin and you say, oh, you just got to believe, shame on you, you're going to be accountable for them. Instead of telling them the truth, whether they're going to hate you or not, at least you tell them the truth and say, listen, you need to repent. You can't live this lifestyle because it's against God's word. God is a holy God. But you don't. You want to be friends with them. So you say, oh, this is all you got to do. I hear them you guys tell testimonies of that, and I feel so sorry for these people who truly believe they're saved, and they're not. Because they think all they have to do is believe enough. So listen, seriously, you guys, read the Gospels. Go through and listen to this article again. I sincerely pray for each and every one of you guys. I truly love you. This is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. And um, I'm just asking you guys, if you any of you don't know Christ, call out to him today. I'm asking you guys, if you're confused on this, Stop listening to other people. Don't listen to me either. Go read the Gospels and, and go read the entire Bible, but start with the Gospels and see and read what Jesus Christ is saying. He's my Lord and he's my Savior. I give my life to him. I give him my will. So if you guys think I'm damned for that, well, wow, you, you, you are truly blinded. I will never change. Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He's my Father. He's in complete. I give him complete control of my life. I'm his servant. I'm here to do his will, not my own. I truly love you guys, and I pray you have a great day.